G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. The FGR2 Phantom has finally gotten its Pulse Doppler radar, and it is absolutely bonkers. Ladies and gentlemen, the FGR2 is um, almost competitive now. It's pretty damn close to uh, a fairly decent plane. And of course, we're going to be checking that out. These games all happened back to back, and they are all absolutely brutal. But of course, before we get into the video, I would like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. We've all heard about Raid by now, but no one I know has actually shown everyone what Raid is all about. Raid focuses around building a team with a certain focus or by using champions that synergize with each other. Some of you may know that I actually play Raid when I'm on the Porcelain Throne or when I actually need to sit down and work on stuff, so let me show you my team and what I'm working on. Currently, I'm building a team based on a turn meter manipulation, meaning that you can basically give yourself extra turns and therefore extra attacks. I'm also running a champion that helps heal the rest of the team for a bit of extra longevity in the mix. Personally, I enjoy sacrificing champions in the tavern to level up my better champions and then feeding them to my best champions to increase their rank. Raid has managed to pleasantly surprise me with its multitude of events, dungeons, campaign, PvP arena, and clan boss, as well as constant updates to keep the game nice and fresh. The summer holidays are around the corner for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, and Raid has a bunch of new stuff coming for you to enjoy. Brand new champions, a Doom Tower rotation, and plenty of events and tournaments for you to try out. Raid is offering a special bonus to viewers of this channel. Click the link in the description and you'll get Chinoru, an impressive Doom Tower Conqueror, 200k silver, an XP boost, and an energy refill, and of course an Ancient Shard which you can use to summon another champion as soon as you log in. Download Raid Shadow Legends for free on Apple, Android, and of course PC. Give it a go, you might just enjoy it. Checking out the link in the description below greatly helps me improve out the channel and allows me to purchase upgrades. I'm currently looking into a GoPro and capture card setup for some face cam and maybe some live stream work and Raid Shadow Legends is helping to facilitate that. So clicking the link, ladies and gentlemen, helps me out a lot. Thank you, of course, to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video. Thank you very much to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. These guys have helped the channel out a lot. And of course, thank you very much to the community who's very gracious about me taking sponsorships. Thank you very much. And back to the video. We are still looking at the FGR2, which is, uh, it is a lot better. But you have to remember a couple of things before we actually get into the gameplay or before we actually get into the battle. It is still an F4C chassis, so you have the airframe there and it is very heavy. Despite being quite quick, you are tend to be caught by a couple of other of the enemies that are quite fast as well. And of course, you don't always see that top speed. Now, that doesn't mean that your top speed isn't going to be amazing at altitude, and that is kind of where you can make your mark. However, you do get matched up against the Americans a lot as the British, which I think is personally quite stupid, but we can have a discussion about that in a video dedicated to it. So, the FGR2 now, with its Pulse Doppler radar, has its two modes with the radar. So you have the regular search mode, and you have the Pulse Doppler mode. Now, you might be seeing this word Pulse Doppler pop up and wondering what the hell it means. Basically, what it does is it looks for Doppler shift. And for those of you who don't know what Doppler shift is, uh, think about like red shift or uh, the Doppler effect, the sound that a plane makes when it whizzes past, or an ambulance or things like that. And you notice that the pitch changes, and that would that applies to radar as well. You'll see that the free, I think it's the frequency, um, or the peaks will come up, will be forced closer together of the uh, radar waves, and so you'll end up with um, a difference in that sort of respect. And you can use that to figure out the motion of something. We use it in uh, ultrasound a lot to figure out the blood flow of blood vessels. Um, and that's one of the things that also applies here to the radar. Now, Pulse Doppler radar is unfortunately unable to detect uh, things that are moving directly side to side. So you are going to have a lot of trouble in circumstances where your enemy is traveling directly across the screen with no movement back and forth and with ground clutter as well. So you do have that massive limitation, but in cases like this, I have managed to sneak around the enemy and have basically gotten behind them. I have an F4C in the bag already and an F5 is ready to uh, jump in as well. Pay that repair cost, you little F5 pesky thing, 
because uh, it's going to be glorious. Set him on fire and off he goes on his merry way. Now, I have got a couple of enemies above me, but they're engaging things like the MiG-21s, and so I am basically free to do whatever the hell I want. So I'm going to pick a target and try and get myself a nice easy kill. Notice how this F5 is kind of not being able to lock on. That's because he's traveling perfectly side to side. The Pulse Doppler really is not sensitive enough to detect things like that. So if that is going to be your main defense against Pulse Doppler, then I guess that's not a bad tactic. So I'm going to be pulling out more speed. And of course, there is an F5 sitting behind me. Once I realize that he is no longer a threat, I turn my attention to another F5 who has put his fire out and uh, decide to send him a little gift as well. Aim 7s, of course, and uh, likely, or oh, sorry, just like the Pulse Doppler mode, it uh, works just as well in uh, high altitudes. But of course, you only want to use this, or you mainly want to use this uh, for lower altitudes, because sometimes, of course, you might be getting enemies that are traveling from side to side, and that will obscure your radar detection. If you just put it in normal track mode, then you won't get that issue at high altitudes, but of course, you won't be able to use it at low altitudes, which is the, uh, the trade-off there. Now, I quite like this. I think that this is a fairly good addition to this plane, just because it's not a plane that is otherwise competitive, and it is a very, very tough plane to actually fly, and, and uh, especially defensively. If you have enemies that are sitting behind you, you can basically kiss your ass goodbye, because this is still an F4C. You still have F4C maneuverability, you still have F4C, uh, like that, that, that bulkiness, that heaviness, and of course you have to carry the gun pod underneath if you uh, actually want some kills that are, don't rely totally on the missiles, because you will need that gun pod. Unfortunately, that is just the way it is. Now, funny if you look at the uh, F5, the uh, attempt to kill steel. Oh my god. Funny things happen when you play top tier. Funny things do indeed happen. Now, if you notice the battle, it's already over. The enemy basically got swept out from behind them and my team managed to not fall apart which was absolutely beautiful you'll never believe this but this is the very next game that happens so we're going to be jumping to game number two having a look at this one actually i think this might be game number three but all three of these happen back to back i couldn't believe it it never ever happens and um, i'm going to be on at low altitude again because we are up against the americans and the americans also have the aim7e and can joust and uh do all the AIM-7E high altitude stuff that you can do. So why not be where you are, you know, unique? Why not shine in an area where you shine best? Obviously, being at low altitude isn't the best in a high tier jet like this. Being at high alt altitude is going to be better. But in this case here, I am skirting around the battlefield, avoiding the original or the initial merge, and then going for targets that might not be suspecting anything. Alternatively, I might also be going for targets that maybe kind of have uh, a friendly that is sitting behind them so if they get a radar ping they might think it's a buddy spike and i've i've had that actually i've i've been able to abuse that and that's quite entertaining so i am going to switch to my uh, aim 9 gs here and notice how i can't lock through the clouds i'm i'm uh, i'm not happy not a happy chappy i like locking through clouds but um it is historical and it actually does add an element of gameplay to uh or an element of tactics, if you will. Um, I will ha reuse this clip for a later video because it does show you something that is uh, a little bit inconsistent with War Thunder. Like, um, like this this guy, he's firing uh, lots of lots of AIM-9Js through clouds. I don't know what it is. It might just be a little bit inconsistent, or I might just be not seeing this correctly. But anyway, we have an F4E here who is looking very fine and looking very tasty. But unfortunately, he uh, is going to get the uh, the assist missile because I didn't like him. I, ha I had a personal vendetta because he's chasing me. But uh, now that that's done, it's time to get out of here because it's uh, it's very very hairy. You don't want to be caught by those F5s. They are very very pesky. And uh, if he had gone and decided to go after me, then I would have been in deep shit because there's not a whole lot that you can do against the F5. They they just they just have their ways. They are a maneuverable beast, and of course, being maneuverable, they require a fairly maneuverable missile, and this is another AIM-7 heading straight their way. Pulse Doppler mode is doing me beautiful here, but unfortunately, some chaff and flares mean that that is not going to be a reality for me. Instead, I decide to go for full brute and end up getting a nice critical hit. 
these F5s are so hardy. I don't know what it is. They just seem to be able to take a hit and keep fighting, which I find extremely interesting considering that they're a premium. I wonder. I wonder if Gaijin's done anything to, to, to change that. Hmm. It really does get the noggin joggin sometimes. Anyway, I decide here to uh, fall back down onto this F5. And of course, I have my ACM mode ready to pick up the F5 so I can put a nice AIM-9G into his backside. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because of clouds. And of course, I uh, managed to snipe him instead with the Brut because Brut is best. This particular plane really does rely on that uh, on that cannon. It It's nice to have lots of missiles, but at the end of the day, if you don't have cannon, you can't do that close-in stuff. So we're too close for the missiles, gotta go guns. And that's exactly what we did now. We're also going to go and help out a teammate here who uh, might be in a fair amount of strife. Unfortunately, he does kick the bucket, so it does leave me with a little bit of a challenge here. I have a two versus one situation, but of course their enemies are at low altitude, and because I didn't turn ACM mode off, I am in a bit of a situation where I can't spot my enemies. So I need to turn my ACM mode off and go back to searching, because I thought I could see him, but it turns out I couldn't. And I try to track off him, but he's too low, he's too fast, too sl too quick, and I'm never going to get an aim 7 off in that situation. So I decide instead to pitch straight up, and if this guy wants to continue through, he's going to have to make a 180 degree turn and bleed all of his energy, which he smartly does not do, allowing me to roll over and of course rejoin the fray. So what am I going to pick? What's my weapon of choice here? I'm thinking aim 9G uh, on the F5. This one here because he's nice and slow, he's engaging the MiG-21, so he's more likely to be in a dogfight and distracted. So he's now pitching up for my friend in the MiG-21, and I'm just going to brute, get a crit, and uh, call it. So unfortunately the MiG-21 bis goes down, and I go into a vertical instead to try and get some, uh, get some altitude and roll over onto the top of him. But of course I make a fatal mistake. Well, not quite fatal, a semi-fatal mistake, let's say. The F5 is just as daring and just as ballsy as me, and decides to go for a full commit head-on, and um, yeah, this is why you don't full commit to head-ons, because you end up like this, like absolutely smacked, because you just pull a funny maneuver, decide, alright, screw it, and then you have to be like this all game, and so doing this type of stuff, very, very stupid, you shouldn't, shouldn't be doing this. And honestly, I'm, I'm kicking myself a little bit for doing it. But uh, that's okay, because we have another distracted F5 and an AIM-7 just to send on his way. This thing is an absolute monster. I, I adore this plane because of the missiles and the Doppler. What makes me love... What gives me this sort of love-hate relationship with the plane is the airframe. I feel like your Gaijin have tried to polish a turd here, and they've come damn close, because this plane is a bit of a turd to fly, and it is a turd to dogfight with, and I love dogfighting. This plane is not my style, but I tell you what, it is not bad for a plane that you just sort of zoom around the map and get some kills in. Okay, so we're moving on to our final match here, and we are going to use our Pulse Doppler radar once again to lock a low altitude enemy. This is a certified Pulse Doppler moment, and uh, it is going to be very, very nice. Don't really know what it is just yet, but we're going to be finding out as soon as we either get the kill, or he pops into view at 3km, and there we go, F-104A. You can get an RWR. I'm pretty sure the F-104A has an RWR, so I'm not entirely sure why he didn't just move out of the way. Just dodge lol, but um, it, it comes anyway, and I managed to pick up another kill. So... We're going to be looking again once we've finished for some uh, targets of opportunity. This plane does thrive on targets that are distracted a little bit. But of course, as you start to thin the numbers out, you can, I guess, energy fight, if you will. And that's kind of what I want to do in this situation. That's what I was doing last match. Uh, but this match, because we're trying to thin out the numbers and it is still early game, you need to be a bit more of a zoomy boy instead. Now, zoomy boy or not, MiG-21 MF on my tail is still very, very spooky. And I'm going to pop some flares and very, very nearly get killed by an R60. I, I genuinely don't know how I survived it, but I survived it nonetheless. And another one is coming my way. I'm going to kill the afterburner and chuck some... Uh, some flares out 
and that's done deal. This thing has plenty of flares to spare, and of course, R60s love flares. They, they find them really tasty. Um, they must rate them like 10 out of 10 on Uber Eats or something, because they really love going for flares. Now, what also loves going for heat signatures is the AIM-9G, and this time it has picked the F5C there to um, send back to the hangar. I have to do a video on the F5C. Honestly, I've been really, really hating facing them because they've just been so frustrating to me. Anyway, now that I have a couple of numbers thinned out a little bit more, it's time to start going into a little bit more aggression. And what we're going to do here is pick out the basically the highest priority target, and that is the F4E. I'm going to try and provide some uh, AIM-7E cover here, but unfortunately it doesn't quite work. I try and prep an AIM-9G, but it's just it's just going to be too hard. So instead I go in with the guns, and I might just get myself a beautiful kill in the meantime. Once that has started, I've noticed that a couple of enemies have come around to the furball. So what I'm going to do again is get some distance and then roll over, kind of like I said in the MiG-23 video. So I'm rolling over here and now it's time to engage the Pulse Doppler once again. ACM mode because I know where all of my enemies are and I'm going to prepare an AIM-7, send it on its merry way and hopefully it strikes home beautifully and just in time. But unfortunately I lose the lock and it just... Oh man, it's so close. I was so close to getting myself another nice low altitude kill. Oh, oh, never mind, I've got the guns. And that is what this plane is really good for. You basically put your enemies into a panic with the guns, uh, sorry, with the, the missiles, and then throw them off with the guns or give the killing blow with the, uh, the guns or AIM-9Gs. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much the best bit about the FGR2. I have to say, I have been talking about this thing fairly positive, but I still find this thing kind of frustrating. At the end of the day, it is still an F4C airframe, so it is still going to be extremely heavy, extremely bulky, and extremely awkward in a dogfight. The key here is to try and avoid those dogfights, and if your team just decides to do a Houdini and disappear on you, then there's not a whole lot you can do. But if your teammates are like not monkey, if they're actually if they've got more than one brain cell between them, you might actually have a decent time. This plane is fairly decent at its role, and of course, being pulse doppler, it is oh man, that, that is a spicy radar. That is an absolutely spicy radar. It, it's quite fun. It's actually quite fun to use, but it is uh, definitely not not great when you have crappy teammates. Now, speaking of crappy, that is a crappy last minute head-on, and I fell for it, of course, losing a gear, but it's, it's alright. Central gear leg. It's, uh, I don't know, Chief. I don't know if I can make it back to base. Not with, not with a central gear leg crit, but um, it's alright. I have an F8U there to save the day, and of course an F4E who decides that he wants to pile drive himself into the ground afterwards, which is no problem for me, because he's not pile driving himself into me. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is the FGR2. It's definitely not as bad as it used to be, and of course, it's still not the top dog, but my god, Pulse Doppler. Pulse Doppler Radar. It's a bit of a winner. I, I think it's a bit of a winner. It's certainly not easy, but you know what? When you get that opportunity to use it, absolutely go for it. Stick to Pulse Doppler mode and um, enjoy that low altitude AIM-7 action. It's, it's quite good. I think that it is a very good addition, and you know what? When I made my video on the FGR2 earlier, last patch, uh, I said it was a struggle bus, and these are the changes that I suggested, and you know what? It's kind of acceptable now. The turd has been polished to about as far as it can go. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you next time.